Okay, what's up, YouTube? Back with another video. Before I start the video off, I want to give a uh, special thanks to um, one of my subscribers. Uh, he made a, a contribution donation to my uh, GoFundMe page. Okay, uh, by the name uh, Jeremy Sears on here. Um, in today's video, we're going we're going to be going over the number nine and how it pertains to black people and what's so special about it. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this book right here as a source, Edward Dr. Robinson Jr. Okay. Now I want you to check out what he says. This is what, this is what science knows. This is what's been proved. This has been written. This is what's been written. Okay. I didn't write it. They wrote it. I want you to check it out. If I had to make two parts, to, two parts to this, I will. You know my channel, I'm going in with facts. So let's go historical point of view. Now, here's what I found out in 1996. Now, they found this out in 1996. Now, I'm going to post this link in my description box. Okay, so you can so you can watch this. Okay? When you come on when you come on YouTube, you make videos. When you come on YouTube and make videos, you have to come with you have to come with facts. Let's go. A group of geneticists wrote this book. Little tiny book. Geneticists. Can you identify where they from? He said a group of geneticists wrote that pamphlet, that book he's holding in his hand. How it came about. Yeah, okay. All right, sure. Yes, indeed. As a, an organization is called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The American Association for the Advancement of Science. Now, this organization is composed of people who study about DNA and the genome, and you've been reading about the DNA and the genomes. Well, this group of scientists came upon an idea by accident at first that different groups of people had different numbers of DNA series. Explain that. Now, a DNA series means that when your DNA is located and say they get a hair from your head and they you subject it to certain tests, they say, well, this is the DNA of Minister Brown. Let me stop right here. Now, I want you to, what I want you to do is when you watch this video, my, this video right here I'm putting over now, go back to my uh, channel, right? And go back to the video I did on, uh, uh, the video I did on, uh, let's see here. Which one did I do? One second. Okay. Go back and watch the video I did on the Titan movies about about is about black people. Go back to the go back and watch that video of the Titans. The Titan movies. Okay? Let's keep on going. And yours is different from everybody else in the world, all right? Then they found further that not only are their DNA series different, but the number of DNAs in there are different in different groups. Whites have a different number of DNA, and blacks have a different number of DNA series. Apes have a different number of DNA series. Then they found this amazing thing. That the greater the number of DNA series, the smarter the person, the group is. The greater the probability of genius within that group. So they tested the orangutans, these 15 geneticists from around the world. That, now, these geneticists came from nine different universities. And we have here on the cover of the pamphlet they put out the names of these geneticists and you can see them right there right beneath right beneath the title of this pamphlet now this pamphlet most people have no idea what it means but breaking it down and after you study it and have it explained to you by a geneticist, a trained geneticist, you will find that they're talking about 
DNA series. Now, here are the names of these 15 geneticists from around the world, University of Japan, University of China. Yale University is the headquarters of this organization called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And you see it down there. Now, this was copyrighted in 1996. All right. What it said is this, and this is, this is the mind-blowing part. It said that when they tested the orangutan, they found out he only had three DNA series. When they tested the gorilla, they found that the gorilla had four DNA series. Well, they're a little, he's a little smarter than the orangutan. They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape, and found that he had five DNA series. Then they went into, they went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe and tested the DNA series of the English, the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, and found they had six DNA series. They only have six strands of DNA. They are... They are a step above the chimpanzee. The chimpanzee, the monkey, only has five DNA strands. Europeans, all these other races, people only have six. Black folks, niggas, guess what you got? You have nine. That is the highest number of DNA. Because after, after the number nine, you have ten. Ten is nothing but a number one. It starts back over. You are the number nine. You are the, you are the supreme. And that's the same thing. Uh, Malachi G. York said in his holy tablets about the number nine ether. Come on, man. Let's keep on going. Then they put all of this, what they found from around the world, on a map. And this map really is called the intelligence map of the world. Because they tested 116 different human groups and found their DNA series numbers. All of them, all over the world, have six. And they put the numbers in form of a little flag that you can see on this map. These little flags have a color. And they show... Oh, this is, this is upside down. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And they show that the English have only six. And it's all into Europe. This ties right back into the information I've been putting out about them studying black people's DNA. And guess what? They can't crack it. They cannot crack, they can't crack the code. Because you have nine strands of DNA. You are supreme. So it don't matter. How, it don't matter how many genetic experiments they do on us. They eat us and stuff. All that stuff they, they have done to us. They never. They can't never. Uh, they'll never be supreme. That's why they do the things they do. They are no. They are. They are a step above the intelligence of a chimpanzee. This is proven by science. I didn't write none of this stuff. This. This is through them. Scientists. Only six. Went over into Japan and China, and they only have six. Over into America with a predominantly European, and they only have six. Then they came to Africa, and they came to the part of Africa. Now, all the rest of them, they put in little flag colors. Those flag colors are, are orange-red, if you notice. But when he came to Africa, found out that the African people have nine, nine DNA series from here just below the Shanghai Empire down to the foot of Africa. All those ten nations of which African Americans descended from one of them. We have 
nine DNA series, the greatest possibility of genius in our group. Now it's answered this age old question how can a people survive being told they're nothing for 400 years, never allowed to learn that they came from beautiful cities? and told they came from a jungle. How could a people survive? How can a people become champions in everything they touch? Because they have nine DNA series, while the rest of the world has only six. Stop. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna put that link in my description box and let's go through the book he wrote. This is the book that he, one of the books that he wrote. This man, he's passed away now. This it's book is entitled, No Man Can uh, Hinder Me, A Message of Defiance from My Plantation Mothers and Fathers, okay? And we're going to go here to, this is chapter, thir chapter 33, Chimpanzee Visit Law School. Now, he, he, is, he is in law school, right? I'm just, summar I'm just summarizing. If you want, if, if you get the book, you can read what I'm, what I'm talking about. So, he's in law school, right? And this is uh, in 1953. Okay, he's in law school and things of that nature, and he's uh, he's amongst his peers, his colleagues, right? And they come upon a pitch, uh, a picture, right, or something like that. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm trying to hurry up because I'm about to break this down into two parts. So um, here, right, he says, one evening as I enter a long hallway at school. I saw a large group of my fellow students gathered around a bulletin board. They noticed my approach and tried in vain to suppress their laughter. And tried to suppress their laughter. Okay, one second. They tried to suppress their laughter. Okay. Uh, he said, I, I saw that they were looking at five or six pictures of apes in various cosmic poses, comic poses. He says, expecting a personal attack, my ego antenna went up instantly. I asked the group what was so funny. Laughing, they, laughingly, they, they replied, it says, quote, doesn't this ape look amazingly like Jackson, a rich pigmented former fellow student? After closely studying the picture, I answered, quote, since we will be lawyers soon, we should seek to look at these things uh, uh, an analytically. Analytically, okay. He says first, what kind of hair does this ape in the picture have? They have. They look closely at the ape and answer, "quote straight." He says that's correct. I agree, just like yours. And I pointed directly at Jim, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, a fellow student who was laughing the hardest. He says. The sound of condescending ridicule began to diminish as I asked the group to examine the ape's profuse body hair, his close-set eyes, his thin lips, his flat buttox muscles, and large, wrinkling ears, all of which are distinct Caucasian and chimpanzee characteristics, not African features. By this time, Jim was desperate, sweating profusely, and not happy at all. The, the rest of the white students share Jim's discomfort. Then Jim received an epiphany. Okay. He says, hold it. He says, hold it, Ed. You haven't mentioned... One second. Okay, he says, hold it, Ed. You haven't mentioned a big thing. What's the big thing, I asked innocently. He says, quote, his color... Jim exclaimed by, uh, victoriously, The ape is black, just like you people. Quote, The crowd, which had grown considerably, cheered in agreement. He says, quote, Oh no, I replied, You're just looking up the ape's hair. The ape's skin looks just like yours. I adjusted with my hands to include all the white folks in the hallway. The crowd's objection was loud, incredulous, and disbelieving. He says, I'll tell you what. I can, I can tell you response to, to the vocal disapproval. I'm not a betting man, but I will prove my point. So he's, so now he's putting, he's going to bet this man that, that the ape has the same DNA or same body, uh, 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 
physiological structure as Caucasian. So he says, the author of this book, he said, I, I called the Philadelphia Zoo and asked for the supervisor of the house where apes and higher anthropoids are kept. When he came to the phone, he says, I disguised my voice by holding my nose and speaking in a, quote, white nasal tone. He says, quote, this is Temple University, I announced. We are having a mute course discussion involving the chimpanzee.